It's nearly 60 years since the king of the day, George V, welcomed the all conquering Australians to England. A lifetime since the youthful lad from Barrel, Don Bradman, made the first of his remarkable and record shattering tours. And a time when the country thrilled to the exploits of our greatest opening combination, Ponsford and Woodfull. It was the golden era of cricket, a time when the world was in the grip of depression and the game was laden with riches undreamt of. While the Don later Sir Donald Bradman took the centre stage in the 30s and 40s and remains one of the great figures of Australian sport, the superstar of the 20s lives in quiet retirement. Outside Melbourne in the tranquil countryside at Wood End, Bill Ponsford is seeing out a great innings. The 87-year-old batting legend was never a great seeker of publicity, never a man to dwell in the limelight, nor a man all that keen on giving interviews. The massive scores he inflicted against Test and Sheffield Shield bowlers were ample testimony to his greatness. Now, more than half a century since he retired from the Test arena, he's being wooed back to the home of cricket. A nostalgic return to Lords for the bicentennial of the Marylebone Cricket Club next month. And Bill's half inclined to make the long trip for the last time. The invitation has been extended to five great Australian cricketers. Five men have made double centuries at Lords over the years. First was the late Warwick Armstrong, the Australian captain they named the big ship because of his tremendous girth. Then came Ponny, a man who relentlessly ground out runs both here and abroad. Sir Donald Bradman, the game's greatest ever batsman. Lindsay Hassett, the graceful and artistic Victorian who played both before and after the war. Queensland opener Bill Brown, and our finest left-hander, Neil Harvey, the last man to make a double ton for the Australians at Lords. All have been asked to return for the celebrations. And it was for that reason that I found myself enjoying a cup of tea and some delicious home-cooked scones with Bill Ponsford during the week. He's always been shy and retiring, and is still a little reticent to look back on those mammoth scores that became world records in the 20s. Twice he topped 400, and no man has managed that feat to this day. And on the Melbourne cricket ground, he once plundered 300 in a day. I had to concentrate on the word go. And that made all the difference, really. With Ponsford in that Victorian team, Sheffield Shield records took a major reshuffle. There was no television to capture his magic, and moving pictures, the silent variety took his feats to cinemas across the nation. It was an era in which an Australian tour of the old country was not taken lightly. A trip to be savoured forever. What about your trips to England? What, you had three three trips three across trips. to England. Mm. How did you go across in those days? Boat. Went across by boat, which were enjoyed by everybody. It must have been great for the team spirit. Well, well, the team spirit was there all the time. That magnificent spirit continues to this day, as former Victorian and Australian teammate Leo O'Brien recalls. After his first trip to England in 1926, he came back an enormously improved player. And that's when the big scoring started. They developed his uh, technique and solidified his great defence and uh, gave him the confidence to go ahead with stroke making. This man, Harold Larwood, will be remembered for the infamous Bodyline series in 1932-33. And O'Brien blames the Englishman for Ponsford's early retirement. We got the better of most of us. I mean, there was no sad about that. I mean, we know that Don averaged 56, but he said he, they cut him down from averaging 100 and it won the series. And uh, there was not the slightest doubt that, uh, that um, Don was the, the boy that they were after. On the 1934 tour of England, the Australians bounced back from that controversial and bitter defeat by Jardine's men. The record shattering Bradman, easing the mantle away from Ponsford. But both men capable of staying at the crease forever. Ponsford had started his test career with a century on debut. That was against England in Sydney and another in his next at the MCG. But Australian fans will always remember his magnificent 266 in his last test match. 
This classic footage captures forever. Ponsford batting with Bradman at the Oval, putting together 451 for the second wicket in only five and a quarter hours, a record that still stands. Ponsford's teammate on that tour was a youthful Queenslander named Bill Brown. Now 75 years of age, Brown still has glowing memories of Pony. Wonderful player, magnificent player. Very much a forward player. Seemed to have a bat much wider than anybody else. Um, great character. And um, was probably one of the first to really look at making exceptionally big scores. Uh, I know in 1934, he was always chasing 200 rather than 100. Of course, there was quite a lot of competition between he and Sir Donald around about that stage. The feats of this great batsman make wonderful and compelling reading. 26 centuries for Victoria and a shield average of 86, twice past 400, twice past 300 and five scores of 200 plus. That makes him one of cricket's immortals, an unstinting plunderer of bowlers. He, he'd uh, never look for any glamour or glory. I suppose he thought like everyone else, nice to read your name in the paper, but as far as uh, walking around and uh, exposing yourself to public opinion, no, no, you let somebody else do that. You only, you only hit the one six in a test career, I mean. I can't remember who's ever doing that, but <laughs> oh, That's a fair dinkum, are you? <laughs> Bill enjoys looking back through the yellowing clippings in his scrapbooks, but try as you may, he won't be drawn into any comparisons between himself and Bradman. Bill Brown knows both men, played with them, and watched them take attack after attack apart. Uh, they were both fellows who could bat, you know, on and on. I think Don scored his runs quite somewhat faster than Bill did, but uh, Bill was, a, you know, a magnificent player and once he got settled in it was a case of shut the gate he was there for the day. In the nostalgic halls of the Melbourne cricket ground Bill Ponsford's photographs will remain forever and the committee gave him the singular honour of naming a grandstand after him. The first player to be immortalised in that way at Australia's and in fact the world's first test match venue. You get the feeling Bill's pretty impressed by it too but that isn't in his style to say so. These days, he's quite content to sit back and enjoy the company of his family, the country air, and to take time out now just to feed the chooks.